welcome to the Artistry House, the uh, HQ of uh, the British Institute of Professional Photography. And we're doing uh, another one of our interviews. We've got an amazing photographer on the line with us, which is Jen, James Muscle White. How are you, James? I'm okay. I'm in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Um, James is a, a, a portrait photographer, and but ha, has some amazing other stories as well. And, and his wrestling images are, are worldwide uh, uh, renowned and known. So we're going to ask him to talk about maybe a little bit about that and his business in a second. Um, so James, I've, I've asked you as part of this uh, series that we're doing, which is uh, is about uh, your fa three favourite things to to pull some images in and tell us about those, and then an image that actually inspires you to do some work. But before we do that. Well, tell us a little bit about what you do, what your business is, and uh, and one of the other, before I start that, I just wanted to say one of the reasons I wanted to interview you is, like me, you're a half glass empty full, not empty, full kind of guy. <laughs> half really glass positive, empty full. A positive person, one of the most positive people in our industry. So um, that's why I wanted to interview you, and now I look right, something, don't I? But are you going to laugh? We're going to get each other laughing all the way through this. Yeah, please, if you would, that'd be great. That's all right, isn't it? We need a bit of laughter, it's good. Yeah, no, I mean, I remember um, someone told me that, uh, what was it? It was like a, a, a pessimist says it's half empty, an optimist says it's half full, and an engineer says it's twice as big as it needs to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> which I thought was quite... <laughs> I've never heard that. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, I use that. But yeah, no, I'm a, I'm, I mean, I'm a portrait photographer. I'm very proud to be a portrait photographer. I have been shooting portraits since 2003 full time. Um, I started in the, uh, at the time, much maligned venture brand. But for those of us who are, um, have got business smarts, we understand how important that brand was to the business of uh, portrait photography within the UK. Uh, do, you know so uh, do you know they're making a comeback as well? They've actually got 20 studios and they're on the rise again. They've got a new owner, but they're really starting to kind of get their act together again. So I mean, yeah, I mean, and I know the reason. I mean, because I was in, I was in the, I was in the, I was in the franchise when it got up to 144 studios, I think it was, and there was wow. certain, there was some in Hong Kong, some in Florida, some in yes. sort of Connecticut. Yeah. So I was in, I was in amongst the system there when, when it was, when we were just knocking out ridiculous figures for, um, for sales and for that sort of thing. And then I was also around, uh, around the come down as well, uh, somewhere around about the two, 2008 sort of global financial crash. Um, but I mean, yeah, but what that business taught me was people skills. It, it threw me in at the deep end. I was just shooting 12 sessions a day from day one. I'd never used a flash gun in my life. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm thrown into that studio with like, so like um, my boss taped up the lens so that I didn't touch the aperture. He told me not to touch the lights. He would turn them on for me at the start of the day and turn them off for me at the end of the day. And he said, go in there and just make sure those families have fun. And that was, and that was enough to make sales. And, and yeah. there was a huge, there was a steep learning curve, but, but there was certainly a learning curve in towards what's important in, in the business of running a photography business. And I'll tell you, like, at that time and with my position you think at the beginning that the photographer's right here but in terms of the value chain and everything you realize that it's quite quite low down on the pecking order below sort of marketing and sales and experience and making how clients feel about the, the experience and, and their pictures so often what they feel about the pictures is more important than the substance themselves I suppose yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite close to knowing quite a bit about venture. My brother was also a venture studio manager. Okay. My younger brother, and uh, he's now actually uh, the head of the studio at Boohoo. You know, they do the clothing, the brand, and yes. uh, online. So, yeah, he, he's the same. He said you he, he learned so much. The manuals that they had, you know, the temperature of the studio, everything. It was, as, as, a, as, a, as a model, it was, it was very, very well put together. Um, Absolutely. And you see, like, it's particularly online or with new photographers or, or people looking to get into the industry, you see them in their first steps of getting into the industry worrying about things that you know they're not going to need to worry about for about a decade. They get, they, do you know what I mean? Though? They get really, really, really uh, like down to the technical side of things and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, no, if you, you, you've just got to keep getting bums on seats and keep making people, you know, have fun and, and, and making sure that, that, that you're smart. like, yeah, you're like it. as well, because people buy people, you know, in this industry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's, um, we're going to talk a little bit further about what you're going to be doing over the next few weeks and uh, Honest, uh, Honest Photographer, which uh, you created. Uh, but before we do that, let's have a look at uh, your favourite pictures that uh, you've taken. 
let's share this screen, shall we? So what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd do something uh, just a little bit uh, different. So uh, rather than going sort of too deep into my back catalogue of images that I'd um, shot over since 2003, <laughs> I thought I'd just look at a little bit of a progression of myself over the last... Is this, six... just, is this a self-portrait every night when you kind of switch? <laughs> no, far, far from it. <laughs> This is a bit of a study of my progression over the last six months, because over the last six months, things like entering awards and stuff like that has actually taken a bit of a backseat. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I've been more focused on the business and, and the experience of things. And, and this is the first image of a, of a wrestler by the name of Cody, uh, Cody Rhodes over in um, All Elite Wrestling in America. And I was very fortunate to um, be flown over there to photograph his debut show. Mm -hmm. And this image was taken at the MGM Arena in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, so I was uh, uh, one of the ringside photographers for this event, uh, invited by Cody, which was just a huge, huge privilege because he's essentially the guy that runs the company. Now, uh, Cody's in the ring here, and he's at the end of the uh, the end of the match, and I'm just underneath the bottom ring rope, sort of shooting up on a on a reasonably long lens. And he, what he's doing is he's giving a post match promo. Believe it or not, he's actually won the match that he's just been in. Um, and the blood that he's covered in is the blood of his brother because the yes. brother the brother was the guy that he was uh, wrestling in the match but a gentleman by the name of Dustin Rhodes who's a veteran an older brother and he's uh, they have a very famous father within the wrestling industry uh, a man who goes by the name of the American Dream Dusty Rhodes who had a huge run in the 80s as like a champion of the NWA and was massively popular in the 80s and just a huge larger than life character and what he's doing is he's giving a, a promo at the end of this match where he's just beaten his brother. And uh, they're announcing that he's got a tag match in the next big show they're doing because they're promoting the next show. Obviously, as wrestlers do, they're promoting tickets for the next show. And he's saying, look, I've got this big tag match against the best team in this company. And I, don't, I, I haven't got a partner yet. And, I, and I'll tell you now, I don't need a partner for that match. I need my brother. And it was this lovely little real moment where they were sort of reaching out to each other as as brothers, not as yeah. these wrestling characters, if that makes sense. And he literally broke down in the ring crying. And this was the moment where he, where he started crying. And I just loved the way in this shot, not only is he covered in the blood and the emotion and all that sort of thing, but there's just this lovely little tear that isn't a tear, it's just the blood just running down from his eye where a tear would be running. And I just thought that that, 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 little, that little thing just gave it a little bit of a you know a little bit of an extra a little bit of an asterisk at the end of the shot and i just thought it was just lovely and uh uh yeah it's just a really special and it's just it's a lovely memory for me for being i started photographing wrestlers in 2014 as like a private project in in and around photographing trainees in portsmouth yeah and then five years later i'm at the biggest show of the year invited as the only ringside you know as one of the only ringside photographers and and you, you you got your fellowship with the MPA with a, a wrestling uh, series, didn't you? Was that yeah, right? I, yeah, that was photographing the wrestling the the the, uh, the the UK independent wrestling scene. So just photographing black and white portraits of the guys fully in character, uh, just trying to get as much character out of them as possible in a classical way to and try and make these images look sort of timeless. So yeah, so but it's just that taking that chance because that project wasn't set up to make money. It wasn't yeah. set up to, to, to further the business in any sort of financial way. It was literally a, a, a passion project. And, and years later, I'm being, I've, got, I've had so many opportunities to meet so many people and to travel to so many places. There's no way a guy like me should have been at the MGM in Las Vegas photographing the biggest wrestling show of the year. No way. That shouldn't have happened. Yeah. But, but because of the chances that we took and the relationships we made with people and the, and the quality we learned to accept in our work which was a high quality um we i was sorry i slowly progressed my way up the ladder i created a niche i suppose within the industry which made me a must sort of um i don't like talking positively about myself like this sorry <laughs> but it but it made me like i guess it made me the only guy to book because there's a hunt there's loads of other american photographers who could have got this gig but they but they flew me out there so i was very very you know so as, as part of your business now, um, as a percentage-wise, is, is the wrestling um, images that you shoot, does that make a revenue stream or is it just something you do as a passion still? It does now. It's, it's still really a passion project. I can't obviously retire off of it, but what it does is it, it allows me to fill gaps in my diary over weekends where there aren't weddings or portraits. Yeah. It allows me to move into the video market because there's a lot of demand for video content within wrestling. 
And it allows me to add to my creative side of my creative portfolio so that we can sell fine art prints online at a higher value. Uh, in addition, we've also, I've also through the wrestling met uh, another wrestler by the name of uh, the product David Starr, who's a American wrestler who lives over here. And we've started a, um, a, an activist movement to help um, unionization within wrestling and within the creative industry, uh, working with equity in London. Yes. So we want to make young wrestlers and young creatives aware of their rights um, backstage and, and, and what they should expect from their employers so that there's no issues with sort of abuse within wrestling or non-payments within wrestling or breaking of contracts within wrestling and that people are given fair working conditions. So that's it's putting a platform in for the next generation of performers not to suffer like the previous generation. Did you ever wrestle yourself as a, as a younger man? Or, uh... No, I've had one training session. I got a concussion 10 minutes in. <laughs> That's a true story as well. It's not even funny. Really? Yeah, no, I got a concussion 10 minutes in. It's my first. I just took a, you take a back bump where you just fall on your back like that. And yeah. I just, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't anyone's fault. It was on a crash mat. It wasn't on a hard surface, but right. I'm 40, I'm 41 years old. I'm just not built to learn, but I wanted to take a bump so that I can experience what it's like for those guys in the ring. So I thought that was, that was important. Yes. Like it's particularly when I'm doing seminars and talking to people about it, I yeah. like to sort of tell people, no, this you, it hurts and i i was um what was i doing i was giving out uh, awards at the mpa awards in scotland with a concussion because i had the training session a week before yeah i was just like uh, yeah it wasn't it wasn't great no. all right now <laughs> <laughs> they're no <laughs> laughing no, seriously concussions aren't any laughing matter no, not <laughs> yeah let's have a look at your next image uh next image let's go uh so this is um sarah thomas um, Sarah Thomas is just one of the most remarkable, amazing ladies um, that I've ever had the opportunity to meet. Now, John Washer is a, is a videographer from America. Uh, he found out about me through the wrestling project and he contacted me on Twitter, which is a modern social media platform. <laughs> to, to a lot of people um, and uh, or just a regular social media platform to the rest or or to me the cesspit of the internet that's what I like to call it um, so he contacted me through Twitter and says oh look I, you know I follow you on Twitter I love your wrestling portraits look I'm flying over to the UK to um, to is it Felix Stale Folkestone I can't remember um, to photograph this long distance swimmer and I didn't really think anything of it and I said oh yeah and I just give him like a price for like what it would be for me to, to go down there and take portraits no negotiation he just took my top price so I didn't once again went into it and I'm like what's she doing she's like and what it turns out that what she's doing is she's a long distance swimming specialist she swam the channel the English channel four times consecutively this year and it's the longest ever continuous uh, channel crossing. I think it's the longest ever sort of like long distance win by anyone, not, not male or female. Wow. So she broke, she broke the records. The most amazing, the, one of the, so many amazing things about Sarah, she's a breast cancer survivor. And in this image, if you look closely, and if you look closely enough on the print, you can sort of see the scar from that. The four lines on her face, which is whitewash, uh, represent the four channel crossings that she had to make. And if you look super closely, there's like little goggle marks on the side of her, uh, on the side of her head. Yeah. Um, and because she'd literally just come out of a two hour training swim, that was a two hour warm up training swim, two hours. Um, when she came out of the water, like we, we were on shore for about five minutes, just first time we'd ever met just chatting. And I said, well, we're just going to, let's do some portraits. <laughs> let's, do, let's do some portraits after your two hour swim. And I had loads of really, really cool ideas as to what I was going to do. And we took a few of them, but I just like the simplicity of this. I like the fact that the sea, which is all, all of this is in camera. The yeah. sea was, um, you know, represents everything that's behind her, everything that, that, that envelops her. She's long distance swimmer. This is, this is all about her. And she's just got this expression on her face that is just not, it's very defiant, but not, but it's vulnerable at the same time because it represents the vulnerability that she suffered with her health issues in the past, but also the fact that she's a complete warrior and a complete fighter. And there's genuine droplets of the sea on her shoulders and on her face because she'd literally just come out of the sea, freezing cold, bless her, because it's England, <laughs> not America. Yeah, but there's a real softness to her eyes as well, isn't there? You can... There is. She's like she really is staring back at you. It's uh... she is that the, this her, her husband has um is holding a a flashlight an Ellington flashlight over the top that I took with me just to add a little bit of fill in there just to give it a little bit of punch to give it that studio feel. So everyone sort of jumped in on it and sort of helped. But um I mean I just 
what I loved about it most of all was the fact that she was very nervous throughout the shoot. She openly said, I don't like having my picture taken, etc. All the things that you normally hear. Mm-hmm. And then we, I had a chat with her. I had a cup of tea with her before I left and drove away. And then I contacted John who booked me and I said, look, I just want to let you know that that went really well. I was really pleased, but I understand that she has reservations and all this sort of stuff. He said, yeah, we're not so sure. She's not so sure that she she wanted to be smiling in the photos and all this sort of stuff because she had this natural instinct to want to smile. And I was kept telling her, don't, 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 don't. And then, um, and then she got the images back and I've just, I got so many messages, not only from her, but from her team and people around her just saying, we can't believe firstly how professional you were, but secondly, how striking and strong these are. And she sent me a private message saying, this was the one I was really not looking forward to seeing because I was really conscious of not smiling. Yeah. And she said, she said it, she said it just tells my story perfectly. Yeah. I can't believe that you've managed to get that out of me. And I'm, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of that image, which, you know, replicated. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's an thing. incredibly powerful image. You just, the, the more you Thank look you. at it, the more it says, doesn't it? It's, uh, I think so. Yeah. Um, so the, so the reason why I've chosen those two is because those two images were entered into the society's um, annual print competition in January. Yeah. Um, and I had quite high hopes for them uh, because I thought, because I knew the stories behind them. So you get self attached to your images. And they achieved 77 and 78 uh, out of 100 for their two scores. Amazing. And there weren't any print faults. So what that was at the time, it's very easy to sort of like get disgruntled and to say, oh, well, you know, they don't know what they're talking about, rubbish judges and all that sort of stuff. And that's not really the case. I've sat on judging panels trying to predict how judges are going to score your images. I said this on Instagram, trying to predict that is like trying to predict the weather. Yeah. Like you got a rough ballpark, but you never know when your image is coming out, what your panel is on the day, you know, what point of the day your image comes out, all these sorts of things and what they've just seen or all the, all that kind of stuff. So although it's as ab, objective as you can possibly try to make it in a judging process, um, uh, there is always going to be, variance does that make sense yeah it does and, and to be honest one of the changes we've made uh, in the institute here is that for qualifications now we get the, the the photographer to actually set the images out and actually introduce the panel uh, and talk right. about it first because i think exactly what you've done there and what you've actually said is the backstory is as important sometimes as the image and once you understand some of the backstory then the the images they breathe life into the images and they, they mean so much more. Absolutely. So, 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 so a younger me would have got really knocked by that. Yeah. And would have got, and would have probably got quite angry and upset. Actually, it's difficult when you're at a conference and you're still commissioned to speak at talks and things. And you've got your email through saying, yeah, none of your images were, were deemed merit worthy. And you'll, and then you've, I literally got, I think I got that I'm telling too much here to you, but I got that email two minutes before I was due to do a 30 minute talk on the flash center stand in the public um, sort of uh, convention area. Yes. And you're suddenly going, Christ, I've got to go and tell these people how to like things. And I've just had a panel of the best judges in the world. Apparently tell me my, my images aren't merit worthy. Yeah. And they've got that little get out clause where they say, oh, 75 to 80 is, prof- we say it's professional standard. We know what, we know what it means. Um, so, <laughs> so, but no, genuinely. So, you, so, but, but, but thankfully, because I've been through the process a number of times, I've just, yeah. you just kind of go, okay, well, that's cool. Um, I can either be stubborn and say they are brilliant, or I can look for feedback. So what I did was I looked for feedback. So I worked out who was the judging panel for my thing, and I made a few inquiries. And I, and I actually just got – and I, I didn't call up anyone who was my mate on the panel. I just called up someone who I knew was on the panel who could be impartial. Yes. And well after the event, not straight afterwards, but like a week or two afterwards, I just said, oh, look, do you mind – there's a couple of these images here that I kind of thought would have got something. Can you tell me why? And one of them was of a uh, female wrestler called Meiko Satomura. And she was behind a cutout of the sign, the, 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 the uh, uh, Venus's mirror, I think it's called. And um, of the sign for um, femininity, yeah. you know, the circle with the cross at the bottom. And she's behind that. I cut that out of a 20 by 16 piece of card, hung it in front of her, stood her behind it, blah, 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 blah. And it transpires that, they thought I'd just put a Photoshop like vector over the top of it, which is where we're going to go to the next image, which is Jordan Devlin. So they, they thought I just Photoshopped it over the top and I'm like, Oh God, no, I didn't. I went to all this effort. And he said, Oh, okay. Well, you need to give us more clues as a judge that 
you know, don't make it so clinical. Give us clues that you've done it's something really, analog, not, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I went to this one, which is obviously the masculine sign again, which I wasn't particularly comfortable with um, as, as an idea and as a concept. But I love Jordan. Jordan's got just a super unique look. He's in super, super fit shape. And, and in this one, instead of just having him stood behind the mount, we had him reaching through the mount. And there's shadows. And there are clues there for the judging panel. And I've, I've left in little faults in the mount that's got like little creases in the paper and tiny little nicks in the corner where the, where the, where the, where the, where the, where the scalpel sort of gone in a little bit. And I've left the clues there so that they can go, oh no, he's actually done something. Oh, this is how it was done. And then that gives it an extra level. Um, so I, I re-chose it. So binned the image that I was in love with, chose yeah. a different image of a different subject with a different mount and entered it in for arguably a different competition in the WPPI. Yeah. We could argue a more prestigious, but they're all the same, aren't they? Um, so I entered this one in for Las Vegas and WPPI and it got judged in the room next to the room that I was judging. So completely separate. So I couldn't go in there to, to watch it being judged, but I did, I knew it was going through. And then you hear all these rounds of applause. You think, is that mine? Isn't that mine? I don't know. And then you got the, the I got the text through saying that it had achieved a score of a merit which given the quality of work that I saw going through at WPPI just completely blew me away. And that was my first um, award there. The following day, I got to do my seminar, my masterclass to a room full of photographers, a room full of photographers from all over the place, all, all over the planet uh, to talk about my portrait show. And I got to open up the seminar by saying, yesterday I won my first award at WPPI. Oh, wow. And I know what it feels like to be sat there helpless while your image is being judged yeah. and to feel like, and to put yourself out there. Um, so it's always what the point of that is, is firstly ask, be, be, be honest and ask for feedback and listen to feedback. Yeah. Cause I listened to everything this, this judge said everything and did everything that he said. Cause the ultimately with competitions, you're not trying to please yourself. You're trying to please judges. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's how, that's, that's why, Photographers are successful at competitions. That's why they're successful at competitions because they're not trying to police themselves. They're trying to please judges, yeah. largely. Yeah. And, and secondly is do something every, this is something I live by, do something every day that scares you. And entering a competition that I've never entered before in front of judges that I hugely admire and respect scares the bejesus out of me. Really? You, you yeah. Seem confident. I, I wouldn't imagine that. Hate it. And the other thing that I was going to say, I really actually like when you do your, uh, your videos, you do your live videos on the Arms Photographer, which we'll, we'll get to in a second. You start off by saying, I'm filming this live so less, I can't delete it. I think that's <laughs> a really, really interesting <laughs> thing that you say. And uh, it really shook a chord with me. That, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, well, it's the honest photographer, isn't it? You, 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 you don't want to go back to it later and look at it and go, no, nah, I'm not, you know, I've made a mistake, said the wrong thing. It's I don't yeah, and I don't read from a script either when I do my videos. So it's in, so what that forces me to do is it forces me to think about what I'm saying, yes. and it forces me to choose my words very carefully because I'm very conscious of like equality and and making sure everyone feels welcome and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it allows me to do that, but it also ultimately you do get honesty out of it, I suppose, which is which is kind of like a you know an important thing. One thing I did want to say actually that popped up I forgot to say um, when I was at when I was at WPPO we had like a pre judges meeting and I got my best piece of advice. I've, ever been given about judging some guy a chicago-based photographer name escapes me i so i apologize but he stood they said has anyone got any other advice and he said can i just say can i swear on this martin yeah you can if you like okay cool he says he says i just want to let every, make everyone know that when you go into that judging room tomorrow remember 79 is a bullshit score and I was, like, I was like, whoa, what's this about and he and he explained himself and he said no 79 means that you haven't got the guts to say it's one thing or the other yeah. you're sitting on the fence there yeah. Yeah. so if it gets a merit you can go oh i thought it was close and if it doesn't yeah. you can go yeah i thought it was just short of a merit yeah. and if so if there's a panel of five this goes i just want to say this to many judges if there's a panel of five and you think it's about an 80 for a merit if you score an 85 and everyone else scores 80 although it's a five difference you've moved that by one point only Yes. You've only moved the score by one point. Yes. So be a bit more brave in what you're saying. Um, be a bit more brave because it's okay. There's no right or wrong answers for judging. No. You know? But just 
it has to take those scores a little bit, you know? I'll be honest, we had our regional, uh, sorry, our national judging about three or four weeks ago, and, and the chair of judges actually said that to them, said, you've got to be brave. If you don't like it, then you mark it down. If you do like it, make sure you mark it properly. Don't sit on the fence, because it's not going to help the author of the image or, or the competition at all. I've sat, on those, I've sat on those panels where 78, 79, 78, 79s have gone through. Funnily enough, all my, all my society scores were 78 or 79, right? So, <laughs> sorry. So, so I've, I've sat there and I've gone 78, 79, 78, 79, 78, 79. And, and it, no one's getting any feedback. No. You're not talking. You're not keeping the room alive. But we're not going to talk about judging. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, that's all right. <laughs> um, I thought the bit of advice you were going to get about WPPI is not go out with uh, Martin, Dare, Stanbury, Scott Johnson, actually. I thought that was going to come out next. <laughs> that's, that's taken. Everyone knows that. That's like, that's like stay indoors during a global pandemic. Everyone knows that. No one's an idiot. That was a great night. I'm just saying. There you go. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. It's good fun. <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's the third one. That's brilliant. And beautiful, beautiful images. Thank you for Thank sharing you. those with us. Uh, so we, we've also asked you about an image that uh, in, has inspired you at some point in, in the past. So okay. So, I mean, there's loads, of, uh, there's loads of photographers that I admire and sort of like look up to, and there's loads of moments that I've sort of had to sit down and, you know, just... I've had. I used to have a tutor at evening school who used to sort of really push me to talk about what I liked or disliked about an image, rather than just sitting there going, "Yeah, I like it. It's nice." Um, but I think this was the first image that I ever really thought about. So I've been shooting photography since I was the age of thirteen. Uh, when I was sort of seventeen years old, I got heavily into the music of Pink Floyd because I was kind of like a really depressed, uh, <laughs> sad little teenager who hadn't discovered girls yet. Um, <laughs> Uh, and this is an image from the album Wish You Were Here, uh, which is like a love letter to their departed member, Sid Barrett, who um, who had to leave the group in the late 60s because he just did too many drugs and was an un unrecognizable person yeah. from who he was before. Um, so this is shot, I believe, it's a, it's a concept from Storm Thorgerson, and I believe it's shot in uh, out the back of like a, a film studio in Los Angeles near Hollywood. And it's on the inside of the of the CD that I had at the time, and now it's on the inside of the LP. If you buy it, it's not it's not the cover art. Um, but it, I remember just stopping when I was looking through. It, always, I love I love looking at CD, you know, the yeah. covers and all that sort of stuff, and all the photography in it. And I stopped and just thought, well, how was this done? And I could feel the temperature on the day because it looks like such a hot image. It's shot, you know, just afternoon. Those deep shadows, but they're very very short shadows, and it's just got this lovely story to it and then when I, later on when I purchased the um when I purchased the I was trying to uh, so I went from 17 never meeting girls to being an 18 year old who bought a guitar to try and impress girls I was never very good at guitar so it actually had the opposite actually had the opposite effect but because I had a guitar and I really liked this album I bought the tablature for it yeah. So I used to turn up to like down the beach with my guitar and try and impress people with my 15 minute long rendition of uh, shine on you crazy diamond uh, acoustic only despite the fact that it's a multi-piece orchestral wonderful <laughs> piece of music there's me going oh no he holds this note for a bit like this <laughs> anyway um, but yeah no and 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 in that in the tablature for it is all of the stills from this wow. so it shows him being set on fire it shows him walking into shot and and then coming away and the fire extinguishers coming on and it's this whole contact sheet and it's fascinating because this image he holds his hand and they're in this position for two frames only Yeah. of that whole section. No digital wow. nonsense, no multi, you know, it's literally yeah. a roll. Yes. And, uh, and then, and then he's, and then he's put up by fire. So this is, this is what photography, if you take nothing else away from this, take this, this is what photography is fundamentally. It is capturing a moment in time that cannot be replicated. And that's what this is. Yeah. It is. It's an amazing picture, isn't it? When you, Thank you. When you, when you think about it in that, you know, there's no composites back then. It was all sh it was probably shot on a medium format camera. It was a it's a one shot deal, isn't it? You get it, or you don't get it. It's it's. But they went they went to a f they went to a film lot and shot and set a guy on fire, <laughs> and photographed it. That's it. That's the story, you know. And that's a concept. So, and if that doesn't scare you as an idea, <laughs> <laughs> something to do. <laughs> okay, that's brilliant. I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Uh, wonderful. So we've got the last couple of minutes. Um, well, maybe a few more than the last couple because uh, there's a couple of other things I wanted to ask you about. Um, I'm going to ask you in a minute about how 
you're kind of going to get through these next few weeks and what advice you would give to other photographers. But I do want other photographers know, to know about the Honest Photographer, which is, uh, is a site that you run and you've now got more people involved with it. But as I said to you before we started filming, even myself looking on it, I found so much advice and it's so useful. It's so entertaining. Uh, I know you did the, the different settings on a camera uh, the other week, but if, if you haven't seen that, if you listen to this and you've not seen it, you must, must, must go and watch it. I will give it. To, I'll give it to you to put into your group. Is that okay? You that can have that be, one on me. That would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, but you can put I on me. swear to God, it made me cry with laughter, <laughs> and I shared it with so many other people who just absolutely loved it as well. Okay, I'll get, can I give you the story behind it? Go on. So we were supposed to be filming, this was like week one of lockdown. We were supposed to be filming uh, like content just for the YouTube channel. We just, me and my wife just said, let's just film anything. Like, and we want to get beginners in da, 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 for this reason. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll just go through the settings on the camera and do it. Right. And I, we filmed the close-ups of me turning the dial on the camera to the different yeah. aperture priority and all that. Yeah. And then, and then I sat down with my camera at the station sat down here like this and i'm like i'm about to video and go through it and i'm like and you've i've just had all this news that the kids are coming home tomorrow they're coming home for about until september you've got no money uh your business that you've built up in the last 10 years is dead right so i'm there and i'm just going i'm just gonna take the piss so i just made up all these terms like that and i just did it like that i just wrote down all the terms what they could mean and then I just started talking about it and that was it. No other planning. It was done in five minutes. It was brilliant. <laughs> Thank Absolute you. Absolute masterpiece. <laughs> and I, you... honestly, I was crying. I had tears rolling down my eyes, <laughs> laughing it was that good. In fact, I think I even sent you a message saying you did. that was brilliant. Absolutely well, if, brilliant. If you like seeing a man have a mental breakdown, then it's the perfect video for you. <laughs> so yeah, everybody, you've got, honest photographer, you've got to go and watch that. So tell us a, a little bit about, you set this up a little while ago, and as you said, it was just for you to be able to, to vent to a certain extent and be honest, and uh, you invited people in that you knew, uh, with, as I said, mindset as, as yourself, uh, positive yeah. photography and honest. Thank you. I think, like, I think there's a lot that sets this industry back, particularly in this country, and not going into specifics, but I'll give you a specific conversation that I've had in the past with someone that I think is the problem that I want to get away from. So you'll meet people at meetings or at conferences and stuff like that. So say you meet a wedding photographer and you say, well, how's business? And I'll say, yeah, business is fine. And then you say, okay, you got get, getting enough bookings. Yeah, we're getting bookings. Okay. How many bookings are you getting? Oh, enough. Okay. So how many is enough? Well, nearly target. Okay. And you just cannot get, any information out of people to help them do you know what i mean it's just yeah. like you're trying to say how much do you i remember going to a meeting once and and someone holding up a 10 by 8 print and saying okay so how much does everyone charge for this and no one would give a price no one would give a price as to how much they charge for a 10 by 8 they were so cagey and i'm like okay well look it's the the, the toothpaste out of the tube now guys so and you can't put it back in so initially it was set up as my safe space not to vent but to vent if that makes sense. So I wasn't going in there ranting or causing, okay, yeah. this person said this, here's a screen grab of this. And I think it's unacceptable. It was just a place for me to go, look, I'm really struggling with this and it's okay to struggle. And if anyone can help me, that's great. And if, Oh, hello. And if everyone else is, uh, and if anyone else is, um, you know, having a difficult time, then this is a place where you can sort of talk to us. Yeah. Give me two seconds. She could, we can do this while she's cuddling me. Is that all right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just I miss that. My daughter's now 23, so I don't get cuddles. Oh, anymore. bless <laughs> What were we talking about? Sorry. Uh, we were talking about the honest photographer and it was... Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I know where I was at. Yeah, okay. So I'll just carry on. So yeah, it was just a place where... I, and I wanted... So the problem I found with a lot of groups was that anyone could come in. Yeah. And I wanted a bit of a handle on that. And I realized at the time that I'd actually um, managed to get a network of people that I trusted. Yes. So I just started with that. And then the whole premise of it was, was like, okay, you guys can invite people in. And then, and then you bring the web. So hopefully the like-minded thing sort of yeah. happens. Yes. And then this whole problem happened with the pandemic. And it was just, I just realized that everyone was in, whether, no matter what photography you are, you're in it together. Yeah. We understand that we're not key workers. We understand we're bottom rung of the ladder. We understand we're self-employed. We understand some of us run limited companies. Yeah. Uh, we understand that we have a role to play afterwards, but we understand that right now we're in a position where we're business owners who have families to look after. And it's a tough time. Yeah. So the only positive to come out of this right now 
is that we have the opportunity to firstly get our shit together as an industry and secondly look at our own businesses and work out where we where we can improve for when times are better yeah. because we always here's here's the thing here's the thing we always complain oh man i can't do that i've got so much editing to do i've got so much to do i can't take on any more work blah 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 you can now you got time now yeah. you have time you got. Yeah. you got time right and like and so now like even like a simple thing like me and my wife sat down and we did a cash flow forecast and when I asked in my group who's done a cash flow forecast, the, the main response was, what's a cash flow forecast? Wow. And we, uh, but we managed to sit down and go, okay, this is everything that goes out. This is everything that's coming in. This is everything that stopped coming in. So let's work out what we can stop going out. Yeah. And then you're looking at stuff and you're going, why are we paying that? Why are we paying this for that? And then we contact people like Adobe and we go, oh, can we get up? And they give us a three month thing. And I video us get, I video me getting the three month relief on my yeah. Adobe contract so that people can see how it's done. Yes. So there's no excuses. There's accountability within that thread as well. You'll find in that thread, everyone from Kelly Brown, who just scored 100 yes. at the WPPI with an, um, fant- the brilliant image, which it was a privilege of me to, to, you know, to be part of the judging team for, yeah. um, all the way from people who are just starting their careers in photography. And everyone, it's proper, it's proper socialism. Everyone is on the same footing in that group. No egos, you know, yeah. no, no problems, no issues no nonsense and it's a photography group it's not a nonsense group yeah. so you come in to talk about not only photography but the business of photography. and that, that was when i when i listened to your rules that there's you know you're not going to post anything unless it's fact and there's no negativity it's it, and mm-hmm. I, I think it's a uh, as i say it's one of my favorite groups and i draw from it as well so oh thank um, you i know that you've you've now invited any photographer to join it if they want to um mm-hmm. to, to get through this period and uh I would implore anybody to to do that. So coming back to you and uh, as your business, obviously you've kind of taken on and helping everybody else with their business. What if you could give kind of a couple of pointers of advice to to photographers who are probably sat there struggling besides going on on a photographer and and and, and going through the thread and all that information? What what would be your top couple of tips at the moment? A couple, top couple of tips. Firstly, go through your studio and just, if you've got a studio or you've got a kit and stuff like that, just go through it and work out what you do and what you don't need. We went through and found, um, this was actually, this, this was to fund a gimbal, but, but it's, more, it's more relevant now. We went through all of our old kit and sold about six lenses that I've not used in five years. So why are they there? So yeah. we just, we sent them over to MPB just to, yeah. Just to, just to get a bit of a cash rebate on all of those. Um, I would advise you uh, to look at, look, contact customers, contact people that owe you money, contact anyone you've got a relationship with, a wedding couple or whatever, and do your level best to look after them now. Yes. Because the people that you look after in the difficult times are going to be the people who are going to be kicking back to you in the easy times does that make sense yeah absolutely yeah you know so i've got like for example i i shot a video for a catering company just before it all went south we're now fast tracking his video so that he's got it ready for 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 now when he's he's doing home deliveries now so he's got a new social media video to sort of capitalize on this situation but also to get it ready for when for later on down the line so when he's talking to wedding vendors or when he needs to do more social media content He's, they're going to go to the people who helped you through this time. So, and also don't feel like you're alone. Everyone's in this, everyone, every, but do remember that everyone's feeling it. Yes. Like everyone, not, and I'm talking outside of photography, you know? So um, yeah, just, just take care. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. James, that's fantastic. It was as always a, a pleasure to speak to you. And uh, as I say, speaking to somebody so positive as well, it, it, it really, and I'm sure that uh, our members and anybody who watches this will, will have gained a lot of information and some beautiful images as well. So thank you very much for your time. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. All the best. Thank you.